Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna start with you a new sculpting tutorial series for beginners. If you are brand new in Blender, you have to check out this tutorial series for absolute beginners. It's gonna help you to understand what we are doing here. So, let's go into it. What can I expect from this tutorial series as a beginner? Well, first of all, we will talk about the character concept. Then we are going to block out the character. After all of that, we will start sculpting the head, then the body. Of course, we want to focus on the read topology in this series. You will learn how to read topology the head manually. And you will learn how you can use free external softwares to speed up your workflow. After all of that, I want to show you how you can create the clothes. For this tutorial, we will go over the boots creation, baking maps and painting quickly because I want to focus on the sculpting art. I promise you guys in the future, I will make separate videos for each of them. So let's start with the character concept. We can start collecting reference images that inspire us using a 3D tool called PureRef. PureRef is a standalone program for Windows, Macs and Linux that keeps track of your images. You can find the download link in the description below for free. Also, if you have some money, you can support the creators. Okay, cool. Which images should I pick? We need to include many reference images for the body and for the face. For this tutorial, you can download all that images that you need to create this character for free in the description below. Yes, I deserved a like for this video, winky face emoji. Also, if you don't have a second monitor, you can print out these images on a paper. So, let's jump into Blender to start. Select everything, hit X and delete. One number to go to the front view, go with Shift A, Image, Reference. GZ to move along the Z-axis or select the Move Gizmo and place the image just like so. Go to the Image Properties, activate Opacity and bring the Opacity down. Of course we are in the front view, that's why we need to place the character from the front. Now we need to push the image back along the Y-axis. If you don't like to see the image from the back, just click on front. Shift D to duplicate, mouse right click, RZ 90 degrees to rotate around the Z axis only, 3 numpad to go to the side view, attention guys, in the side view we need to push along the Y axis only. Alright, now we need to push the image back from the center, that's why we need to push the image along the X axis. From the Outliner, double-click to rename this folder. Click here and activate this icon. Now if we deactivate this icon from the Outliner, we can select the images more. And this is very helpful, because we don't need to touch the reference images accidentally. Now we need to add a new folder for the body. To do that, click here. Double-click to rename this folder. Make sure to select this folder before we add anything. One numpad to go to the front view. Before we start, we need to activate an add-on. Go to the Edit, Preference, Add-ons. Go ahead and search for Extra Object. Click here to activate this add-on. If you want, you can save your preference as well. Now go with Shift A, Mesh, Round Cube. Click here and change the radius into 1. And we need to change this value into 16. As you see guys, we just created a clay ball to start blocking out the character. Move the clay ball along the z-axis into the top just like so. Shift D to duplicate, important shortcuts for now, G to grab, S to scale and R for rotate. Click on this little arrow and change the material color into random. Now we need to switch into the sculpt mode. To do that, click here and choose sculpt mode. I prefer to use the shortcuts. Hit Ctrl tab and now we can switch quickly between the object mode and the sculpt mode. Wait a minute. So many brushes, which one should I use? So guys, don't worry about that. I will show you how you can use one or two brushes to do the job. 
The most important brush for now is the grab brush. Very important, we need to activate the geometry manually on the X axis because Blender doesn't do that. Hit F to change the radius and start to follow the reference image. To see through the mesh we need to activate the X-ray mode. To do that click here or hit Alt Z on the keyboard. As I said before F to change the radius, Shift F to change the strength. It's very important guys to take your time. If you are expected to create a character in one click in this video, that's definitely will not happen. Blocking out this bad boy took me about one hour to finish and it's okay. I prefer to split the work area into two pieces. One side is for the front view and the other side is for the side view. The shortcut T on the keyboard will hide or unhide the brush menu. In the side view, Alt Z to switch into the X-ray mode and start to make the torso from the side. I think it's easy to understand guys, now we need to follow the reference image from the side and from the front as well. By holding shift mouse left click we can smooth the mesh. When you are done, control tab and switch into the object mode. Select the glay ball, shift D to duplicate and place the glay ball on the top just like so. Ctrl tab and back to the sculpt mode again. Apply the geometry on the X axis and start to form the head. Super, we need to create the neck. We can create the neck with a clay ball or we can go with Shift A, Mesh, Round Cube. Click here and choose Capsule and change this value into 16. In the edit mode, Ctrl R to add some loop cuts there. Move the capsule into the top, Shift D to duplicate and here we go. As you see we have an error message because we didn't apply the scale. We can apply the scale right now or later. To be honest with you guys, if you want to learn something, you need to learn something right. The right decision to apply the scale, definitely. I didn't care off about this point when I recorded this video. Sorry about that. In the object mode, Ctrl A, all transforms to reset the location rotation scale into default. Now if we switch into the sculpt mode again, we will not get an error message. So guys, I let you enjoy with this process because I didn't have anything to comment and I will be back again.
To create the fingers, we need to duplicate the capsule. In the front view, go ahead and place the capsule just like so. As to scale, now hit SZ twice to scale along the local axis. Hit Ctrl A and apply the rotation and scale. Ctrl Tab and switch into the sculpt mode. We can use the grab brush to do the job. Or we can use the pose brush to do the job. Grab this brush and as you see guys, now we can pose the fingers as we want. As I said before, it's up to you guys. You can use the grab brush to do the job or you can use the pose brush. Important is to make the area under the nails flat. For this step, we don't need really reference images because we can look at our hand. You can look at your fingers to understand what I mean. When you are done, select this index finger, Shift D to duplicate. And now we are ready to create the middle finger, the ring finger and the pinky finger. Of course, we need to switch into the sculpt mode and start to improve the finger shape. We need to duplicate the index finger one more time to create the thumb. To place the thumb, use the normal command like G to grab, S to scale and R for rotate. Also, you can hit R twice to rotate freely. Back into the sculpt mode again, now we need to use the in flat brush to make the thumb thicker. And here we go. Use the grab brush again to make the final touches. Blocking out the character, it's an underrated process. I saw many beginners ignore this process. I'm a beginner too guys, I have been learning sculpting for 6 months only. Be smart guys and start to focus on the golden rules. I think you got it. Please guys, don't try to improvise anything in the moment if you are beginners in sculpting. Just try to recreate what you learn. In the object mode, select the head, hold shift, select the neck and hit shift H to hide everything except the head and the neck. Before we start sculpting the head, we need to combine the head with the neck. To do that, we need to add a boolean modifier. Go to modifiers, add modifier, boolean modifier. Well, this way it's correct, but we need to speed up our workflow. That's why we need to add an add-on for that. Go to edit, preference, add-ons and search for ball tool add-on. Select the neck, hold shift, select the head and hit Ctrl shift plus numpad to combine the mesh together. Hold Z, go to the wireframe mode to see what I mean about that. Alright, back into solid mode. Hit Ctrl A, all transforms to reset the location rotation scale into default. Ctrl tab and switch into the sculpt mode. The first golden rule, don't start with the high level of polygons from the beginning. Blender it's definitely not ZBrush. What I mean about that, we need to be careful with the polygon count. Even the ZBrush artists start with the low polygons count. This is very important guys. The second popular brush is the crease brush. As I said before, F to change the radius, Shift F to change the strength. Start to make a line right there using the crease brush. The lines will detect it where the eyes should be. The second golden rule, please don't ignore the face proportions. It's highly, highly important. A face is divided into three equal parts. The hair lines into the eyebrows, eyebrows into the button of the nose, the button of the nose into the button of the chin. The eyes are halfway between the top of the head and the chin. The button of the nose is halfway between the eyes and the chin. At some point we need to add more vertices to have more controls, right? That's why we need to remesh the object. To do that we can click on remesh, change the voxel size and click on remesh. Or we can use the hotkeys for that. Shift R to change the voxel size. Ctrl R to remesh. As you see guys, we don't have enough faces to sculpt with. That's why we need to undo this step. 
one more time and decrease the voxel size number about 0.151. Tap to edit mode. As you see, it's ok for now. By holding the shift key mouse left click we can smooth the mesh. We need to remesh the object one more time. Shift R and go with 0.70. Ctrl R to remesh. By selecting the sculpt draw brush we can start making the bridge of the nose. Three notepad to go to the side view, select our grab brush and start to form the nose. For this step please ignore any details for the face. We focus only on the general shape. After grabbing the nose just like that, Ctrl R to remesh the head one more time. Using the glay brush allow us to add a new geometry for the mesh. It's a very popular brush also. I try to make the corner of the nose using this brush. Of course the grab brush is a very important brush for the moment. Using the inflat brush allow us to push the area around the mouth just like so. Select the crease brush and start to sculpt the gap between the lips. <laughs> the head looks horrible in the moment, don't worry about that. Select the grab brush again and start to form the mouth just like so. As you see guys we have a really low polygon count in the moment. But we start to see the mouth and this is what we are looking for. Select the in flat brush again and push the upper lips forward just like so. Also we can use the grab brush to improve the chin. You can also push the area around the eyes forward using the in flat brush. As you see guys we need more polygon count to have more control. Shift R to change the voxel size about 0 0.0030. Now hit Ctrl R to actually remeshing the object. Tap to edit mode, as you see guys we have more vertices to work with. We can smooth the object with holding shift mouse left click. Select the in flat brush. By holding ctrl we can flip the direction of the brush. And this is very helpful in some cases like the lips. As you see guys I'm not doing anything crazy in the moment except grabbing the grab brush and forming the mouth. To create the filtron we need to use the glay brush. Select this brush, hold ctrl and start to add details just like so. We can also sculpt a little hole on the corner of the mouth just like so. This step gonna help us to pop up the overlap. I need to see it again, please guys take your time and don't rush. If you ignore this point you can't be successful at the end of the day. Let's say guys we need to push the overlap from the bottom lip. How we can do that? For this one we need to use the mask brush. Select this brush and as you see we can draw a simple mask on the surface. This mask will not be affected by any other brush. We can also control the radius and the strength like other brushes. By holding Ctrl mouse left click we can erase the mask. Select the grab brush and start to push the over lips just like so.
Guys, you can clear the mask with Alt M. Select the draw sharp brush to make the holes of the nose. Now if we hit Ctrl R to remeshing, we don't have enough polygon count to work with. Ctrl Z to undo that, Shift R to change the voxel size about 0.0019, Ctrl R to remesh. I think you got it guys. There are no magic brush that create the character in one click. You need to experiment with these brushes to have the knowledge. And this is exactly what we are doing here. Because it's a creative process, I wanna let you enjoy it with the music. So, let me show you how you can easily create the eyes using the mask brush. Select the mask brush and change the fall off from smooth into constant. Alright, start to draw the eyes just like so. Don't forget to hold Ctrl to clean up the lines for the eyes. When you are happy with the shape, Hit Ctrl I to invert your selection, select the move gizmo and move the eyes backward along the Y axis. Hit Alt N to clear the mask, select the grab brush and start to grab this area backward just like so. It's time to add the eyeballs. Ctrl tab and switch into the object mode, go with Shift A, Mesh, UV Sphere, change the segments into 12, select the UV Sphere, hit RX 90 degrees to rotate around the X axis, as to scale and place the UV Sphere just like so. Ctrl 2 to add a subsurf modifier. Select the UV sphere, Ctrl A, all transforms to reset the location rotation scale into default. Go to modifiers, add modifier, mirror modifier, and switch into the sculpt mode again. Select the grab brush and take your time to make the shape for the eyes. To add sharp edges for the eyes, select the crease brush, hold Ctrl to invert the selection of the brush and start to add sharp edges for the eyes. I think you got it guys, it's not that complex, it's a little bit tricky. Also you can use the flatten contrast brush to flat the area around the eyes just like that. I like to use this brush a lot around the eyes to clean up my work. And again guys, use the crease brush to create the eyelid.
Use the inflat brush to push the area on the top of the eyelid a bit forward. Like every human body, the eyes are very different from human to another. For this step, we have no rules. We just need to follow the reference image. So guys, that was all about today's video. If you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up to see you in the next one.